Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shot, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Ben asks, what character from a previous Zelda game would you like to make a cameo in Zelda Wii U or Link Between Worlds? Obviously, Ganondorf, Zelda, and Link don't count. P.S. You're next. Um, you know, I think the main one I have to pick here is Tangle. I mean, like, there's a lot of characters in the series that would be very interesting to see again in the right context. Uh, it just has a host of such characters, so it's, like, hard to pick one. Just tell me yours in the comments. Uh, after, you know, it's so hard, I'll, I'll just leave that to you guys. I'm gonna pick Tangle. I think Tingle is, like, a really funny character. He's a little disturbing in Majora's Mask, primarily just because of how he looks. Like, that game made him look really creepy. But I don't know, I think in uh, all of his appearances, he's been a very amusing character, and all the better for being so freaking strange and weird and a little off. So, I don't know, I'd love to see him again. I was a little disappointed he wasn't in Skyward Sword, uh, and i I just like to see him again in another Zelda game. Sir Ursus asks, You said in your last mailbag that if you had to live sometime in Hyrule, it would be between two of the games. When would you want to live if it, would ha if it had to be during the events of a game? Um, I'd want to be, like, in, uh, in, in Hyrule? Uh, during Majora's Mask, not in Termina. Alright, I'll be fair to this question. I mean, obviously you'd want to live in some place safe, but if I had to pick, uh, like, an adventuresome scenario, one of the, frankly, horrible scenarios in any of the Zelda games, I'd probably pick Link to the Past, because, you know, like, it's relatively safe. I mean, you're, you're screwed if you're one of the Sage's uh, families, but let, let's face it, do I look like Sage family material here? Um, so I, I, yeah, like, I would probably be pretty okay, just because th bad things hadn't gone down yet. And even if I, like, got caught up in the Dark World or found a means of going into the Dark World, I mean, like, that's like guilt-free violence there, right? You can fight cool monsters, and, uh, you don't gotta feel bad about it, because one, they're monsters, and two, okay, they're not monsters, but they were bad people. So, it's fun. Microraptor13 asks, what music from previous Zelda games would you like to reappear in the new Zelda games? I kind of would like the original Gerudo Valley theme from Ocarina of Time. Well, this is a great question because, you know, the Zelda series really does do that a lot. Just copies music from previous games and you hear it again in new versions and whatnot. It's, it's very cool. And, uh, you know, like, tell me your guys in the comments. But uh, for me, I think I would have to pick, like, a couple of the songs from the original Link's Past. I think the forest theme would be kind of cool just because it was a really unique forest theme that you haven't really heard anything quite like uh, since then. But I also would really love to hear the... Uh, the Light World Dungeon theme again, because I thought that was just really unique and cool. Um, obviously, uh, that and probably the Forest theme are, are going to be in Link Between Worlds, but I don't know, it'd be interesting to hear like a really epic version done in a 3D Zelda game or something like that, but, you know, it's something, and it's very cool. Um, and the other one, I think, would be the overworld theme of uh, Link's Awakening, which also kind of was in the Oracle games, because it was a lot like the uh, classic overworld theme, which I'm actually ironically not too fond of, but it was very unique and very epic uh, in its own. It was very its own song, and uh, I really liked it, and I'd love to hear like a really epic rendition of it in uh, like a big big budget 3D Zelda game. I think it'd be really awesome. Uh, Zelda Games 1095 asks, do you think items in a, link to, in a Link Between Worlds are going to be new items, or are they going to bring back the old items, or even mix new and old items together? Um, I really think that because of... Uh, like, I think it's an, it, it's indicated by the fact that it has the same amount of item slots as the original uh, A Link to the Past, uh, that uh, they're probably going to have mostly the same items that that game had, probably with, like, new functions and stuff. Maybe they'll be renamed, like, instead of the hook shot, you'll have the, you know, the claw shot. You know, bad example, but you get my point. Um, I think you'll see things like that, where they, they have different versions of the same item, or uh, upgraded versions of the item, which just has more abilities. Um, and I also think some items, like the Book of Medora, which doesn't really make sense, it's an item you have to equip and use in the right situations, uh, will be on that menu, maybe it'll still reappear as a quest item. And I think a lot of items, like the medallions, will get condensed, or things like that. I expect a little shifting, but for the most part, the, the repertoire of items will be pretty much the same. Um, I am asking... Uh, I assume that, uh, asks, uh, do you think that they will come, will tone down the amount of rupees you need to pay Tingle in the Wind Waker HD? Uh, not particularly, because honestly, uh, the whole game really is geared around, uh, feeding you tons of freaking rupees to solve that quest and just have enough by the end. Uh, I think that what, like, some other people have pointed this out, uh, but it's the main thing I think I'd like to see, because they have talked about changing, doing some changes to that part of the game, I believe. 
Uh, which is to make it so you can simply get some of the charts earlier. It's it's weird how at the end of the game you're really restricted to having the hook shot to get a lot of them. And uh, I think getting them early would also help with the rupee issue because you'd be, be become more aware of the fact that you really do need a bunch of rupees at the end of the game. So as, as you're made aware of that earlier, you'll, you'll start collecting rupees and it won't be as much of an issue. Because honestly, if you're not skipping over tens of rupees, you should have plenty by the end. Question Mark asks, how do you think the next Zelda game on the Wii U will use the in-game Miiverse? Because they can't reuse the Wind Waker HD's bottles if there's no ocean. Uh, this is something where we really just don't know what the answer to this is. It does definitely seem like they're really going to be leaning away from a traditional multiplayer, although I still have my hopes up, because, uh, you know, Four Swords would be really awesome on the Wii U. Um, but, uh, so it's likely to see something very interesting like that, Miiverse related, as you said, but... Uh, the Tingle Bottle thing could still be done, it just wouldn't be a bottle in the ocean, they'd still be sending messages, but a way uh, for the game to center a lot about exchanging information or pictures or whatever uh, could be very interesting. And they, if they have, like, treasure systems, they could obviously do all kinds of, like, treasure swapping or sending solutions to puzzles, things like that. It could be very interesting if they do it right. Uh, Ocarina of Death, who got everything, like all the sounds and quotes and music right on the last mailbag, which is impressive, uh, asks, do you prefer endings that are left more open to interpretation like Link's Awakening and Majora's Mask, or endings that are more complete like Twilight Princess and A Link to the Past? Um, I actually didn't feel like the endings of Link's Awakening and Majora's Mask were necessarily open to interpretation, they're just a little more mysterious, but I think I see what you're saying about like uh, more vaguer endings, like less uh, specific on the exact events that occur afterwards, whereas... Um, uh, even if they wrap themselves up or not. Um, whereas, uh, compared to endings like the other games, where uh, it really does wrap up the events quite nicely and just shows everything that happens. Uh, and I don't think there's a better way to do it. I think they're both cool. It just depends on the kind of story and the kind of tone and setting you're trying to set with your game. I think it just really depends, and both work for the Zelda series. Um... V Gamer TV asks: There has been Zelda games in the ground, air, and sea. Do you think that there will be one in underground in an underground overworld with fire? Um, you know, an underground overworld would be interesting. I think it would, in some ways, hamper like the whimsy and the just fantasy aspect of the series. Although there's certainly a lot of interesting things they could do down there. So maybe someday, some game, one time, <laughs> sure. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if Helda with like fire and brimstone or whatever is necessarily the right way to go with that. Uh, Raindrop14 asks, The Legend of Zelda has always been a fantasy, classical musical atmosphere. What do you think of a Zelda game with more modernized music? Not necessarily to rock out in Zelda, but to add a little more jazz, or so to, so to speak, to the mu Zelda musical area. Well, I think there's definitely been some Zelda games that have done this. There was some jazz-ish songs in Majora's Mask. Um, and there was a lot of weird like electronic stuff in Skyward Sword with the Silent Realm Guardians chasing you and whatnot. So I think the series has at times experimented, and I think it could do continue to do so. Hell, Skyward Sword had jazz too with the, uh, the Magma theme song. So yeah, different musical styles. I think the series has always kind of experimented with this. It's like the dungeon themes have all, often been cultural too, like in Ocarina of Time. And I think continuing to do so and doing more experimentation with it, that could be very cool. I definitely like it. Lion Cake asks, I know this would be a bad idea, but uh, if Nintendo wanted to make a crossover game with The Legend of Zelda, which game would be the best to choose? Um, I think it would just, you know, like, just do all of the Nintendo, uh, other main Nintendo series. Oh, wait. Zelda Maker 1 asks, do you think Nintendo should make another side-scrolling Zelda game? Why or why not? Yeah, I definitely think so. I, one thing about me is I think that, like, none of the Zelda games have been bad, and a lot of them have different gameplay styles. And I think that there's really no way to, like, ditch any of them. Like, the Zelda series differs a lot from game to game, so why not bring back the styles that, uh, you know, like, haven't been used for a while for at least one game and just give them another shot, give them another bit of exposure in the series just because they're all kind of cool. And I think there's a lot of things that can be done with a side-scrolling Zelda game, and in particular, I just the idea of having a Zelda game with Zelda items, Zelda settings, Zelda style, and a lot of its ideas and enemies uh, put into a side-scrolling, more platformer-like environment would be very cool. It'd be like Metroid a little bit, but it'd be very different in its own way uh, with certain RPG aspects or just fantasy elements, and it would be very interesting to see. I'd be very fond of another 2D uh, Zelda game, uh, it, and any of the styles could come back. That'd be very cool. Piplup Water asks, What would you think of Ocarina of Time being a trilogy on the 3DS with Majora's Mask 3D hopefully on the way, and an original game in the same style? What do you think about a game concluding that link story in a new adventure? Um, you know, it's actually very interesting. I don't think Majora's Mask needs um, a remake. I've been over this. I, I just, I, I think the game was, uh, Ocarina of Time made sense to remake because of the anniversary and whatnot, but I don't think Majora's Mask makes a ton. 
And I also don't think Majora's Mask necessarily needs a sequel. I know a lot of people have talked about uh, making a sequel to Majora's Mask. But I do think that, uh, ma like, making a sequel that's not to Majora's Mask's story, but to that Link as he goes on, could be very interesting. And it's, it would be a great excuse to tell a story about an older Link. Like, if you just had the Hero of Time and he's much older, maybe he's an adult now, and he's off on some adventure late in life. I mean, I think that would be very interesting. I had that idea for a story of mine once, uh, like, fan fiction -y, fan game, whatever whatever thing. Um, and I think it'd be very cool if they did something like that. It's definitely like the, the ideal time to do something like that. And seeing some, what happened to that Link afterwards, did he find Navi, for example, would be very cool. All right, guys, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the contact information in the description, and I'll see you guys later. If you had to live some time in higher... Well, well, that you wish that there was more land or things that... Blah, blah, blah.